Are you selling a house in a fast moving real estate market with low inventory levels and you're concerned that your house is gonna sell before you find your next one? Well then you're gonna to wanna to stick around and watch this video because that's exactly what we're talking about. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a realtor located in Central New Jersey. Every week I post videos about what it's like to live and work here and guidance on buying, selling, and investing in the area. If this is something that interests you or applies to you, you might want to consider hitting the subscribe button below because this channel could be a great resource for you. Now, if you're buying and selling a home at the same time, there's a lot of challenges and concerns around that. I've already addressed one of the first concerns that I get from a lot of buyers, and that is a home sale contingency. What is it and how does it actually apply? This applies when you actually need the funds out of your home sale in order to fund your new purchase. I've made a whole video about the home sale contingency topic specifically and how it affects both the buyers and the sellers in the transaction. I'll include a link in the description box below if you want to go check that one out. So putting the required funds aside, let's say you're a home seller or soon to be home seller and you're really concerned about finding your next house and sort of being homeless in between. I'm having this conversation with more and more sellers because in our area, inventory levels are at record lows. There's just not a lot of people selling out there. So the biggest concern most sellers have is, What's gonna happen when my house sells fast and I don't know where I'm going? What exactly are my options in that situation? The first option I discuss with my sellers is whether or not it's financially feasible for them to actually go out and purchase their next home first. If you can do it, go shop and find your next home first and then put your home on the market after. If you plan on getting financing on this new home, then you're gonna to wanna to meet with a qualified lender and review all of your finances and confirm that you can actually qualify to carry both mortgages. And of course, if you're gonna purchase your next home with cash, well, you're already ready to go. So I say go out there, shop, find your dream home, close on that first, and then when you're all ready, you can then put your home on the market. The great thing about this is you can actually move most or all of your belongings out of your old home into your new one, allowing you to be able to properly stage and prepare your home for sale to get top dollar on your existing home. Now, if it's not financially feasible for you to purchase your next home first, and you do need the funds out of your current home sale to complete the purchase, well then that's where a home sale contingency is going to apply to you as the homeowner. In that situation, I'll discuss with the homeowners whether or not they actually have any temporary housing options available to them. That could be friends or family or even a short-term rental, an extended stay or a hotel depending on what the time frame is. You see, in a competitive market with a home sale contingency, you're gonna wanna get your home on the market and get a contract on it. And the further you are in that purchase contract, the stronger your offer is going to be when you're out there competing against other offers. Again, I discuss this in a little bit more detail in my last week's video and the link is in the description box below. But I'm always gonna advise that you get your home on the market and discuss what your plan B options are if your home sells and you haven't found your next one yet. Of course, you wanna take into consideration any costs associated with doing this. If your home sells, and you do have to stay, let's say in a short-term rental um, or at a friends and family, what is that gonna cost you and what is it gonna cost to put your items in storage? I talk to my sellers about the pros and cons of doing all of this. And sometimes the extra money spent for peace of mind for my sellers is the way to go for them. I've even had a client sell their house and all their belongings and they moved into their RV and they traveled for a few months before they settled down and bought their next home. So don't be afraid to get creative. Now, after running through all of these different options with my potential seller, if none of these are really feasible for them, then the last option we have is building in what some people call a seller relocation contingency, which means when we're advertising their property for sale, we're disclosing upfront that the closing is dependent upon the seller finding and closing on their next house. Essentially, the closings have to coincide with each other. When inventory levels are low and there's still a lot of buyers out there, buyers are a lot more willing to work with the seller and give some flexibility on the closing date if it means getting them into the right house for them. However, there is a little bit of a risk because it may deter some buyers if that particular buyer has a specific timeline that they have to stick to because leaving the closing a little bit open-ended might not work for them. And if you're a seller using this strategy, please understand that buyers are not gonna wait around forever. It's very common for them to wanna put a time limit or a deadline 
on you finding your next home. 30 to 60 days is pretty common for when they want you to find and go under contract on your next house. Now, if you've reached this deadline and you haven't found your house, the buyer can choose to extend the deadline or walk away. Now, because the real estate market is always changing, going up and down, and it's shifting between buyers and sellers, and it can vary from state to state and town to town and even neighborhood to neighborhood. You might be watching this and your neighborhood and whatever time you're watching this video happens to be a buyer's market. Now in a buyer's market, the buyer holds more of the leverage. So in those situations, if you're a seller and you have this concern about your home selling anyway and not finding your next one, maybe what you're looking for has very specific needs, well then you might be able to take on a little bit of a risk about finding and shopping for your new home and applying that home sale contingency because a seller might be more willing to work with you on that home sale contingency. So all is not lost, there's still options out there for any situation. It's really important that you partner with a real estate professional that truly understands your market in your area, in your neighborhood, and can really work with you and advise you on what the best option is going to be for you and for your family. As always, thank you so much for watching. You know, I really enjoy making these videos for you every week. If you have an idea for a future video, leave it in the comment section below. And of course, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and say hello in the comment section below. I love hearing from where everybody's watching these from. So wherever you're watching this, put your state or your city in the comment section below. And of course, if you haven't already done so, consider hitting that subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every Monday. And if you're looking for any guidance on buying and selling at the same time, especially here in central New Jersey, I'd love to hear from you. I'll see you next week.